Joining me now is Florida Congressman Michael Waltz, a member of the House Oversight, Armed Services, and Foreign Affairs Committees, as well as the Select Committee on Intelligence. He's also a retired National Guard colonel and Green Beret. Congressman, it's always a pleasure and an honor to talk with you. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks, Maria. Good morning. Y your reaction to all of this, and now had the fact that, you know, the administration is saying we stand with Israel, but, 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 we won't be part of any retaliation. Yeah, Maria, it's, it, it's no surprise that Biden uh, is doing more to constrain Israel than he is to constrain Iran uh, at, at this point. Uh, the biggest way that we could help Israel, help our ally, and actually live up to the rhetoric is cut off Iran's cash. We've been saying it for months uh, that they are exporting more oil than they ever have. They're selling 90 percent of it to China. So Chinese money is flowing into Tehran that is then flowing out to all of these terrorist proxies, including the Houthis, that are cutting off global shipping uh, down, uh, down in the Red Sea. Uh, that's what we have to do. Uh, and in terms of aid, we have had two aid packages, one with pay for, one without pay fors, sitting on Chuck Schumer's desk for months. Maria, we've also passed the SHIP Act out of the House that would put secondary sanctions on Chinese buyers of Iranian oil, the shipping companies, the insurance companies, the refineries. If we were serious about helping Israel and we want to get to the long-term problem, you have to cut off the cash in Tehran that they are using to fund all of this. And they're going to keep doing it and launch more drones, build more missiles, uh, and keep pounding our ally uh, until uh, they have a catastrophic hit. We've got well, to cut off the cash. That's the you, 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 biggest you, thing that we could do. You make such an important and practical point, Congressman. I mean, you, you would think that this is the easiest thing that this White House can do. Just cut off the money to Iran. You know, it, it, it doesn't involve a military move. It doesn't involve getting being part of any That's retaliation. Right. I mean, just cut off the money. And, and in fact, this administration is doing the opposite. Okay, so they waived the, the, the sanctions uh, renewal. Uh, and then on Friday, the president said he, ex he did expect Iran to attack Israel sooner rather than later. And he, and, and he sends this message to Iran. It's not the first time we've heard this same message. Watch. What is your message to Iran in this moment? Don't. I have one word. Don't. To any actor, state or non-state, trying to take advantage of this crisis to attack Israel. Don't. We have just one word. Don't. Well, obviously, they weren't exactly shaking in their boots from uh, the don't warning, sir. Former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo reacted on X, writing this, So much for don't. When your Secretary of State declares near moral equivalence between good, our ally Israel, and evil, the Islamic Republic, you get bad guys wreaking destruction, Congressman. Well, they also know that there's going to be no consequences. So you could have the most powerful, capable military in the world, but if our allies and enemies don't respect or fear you uh, or respect your capability and will to use it, then, then it's for not. And what President Trump knew uh, and the team around him, Maria, including Mike Pompeo, is that you don't have to use the military. Our most powerful weapon is actually our economy uh, and the ability. I, I just don't know how to say it. When you when you waive sanctions, you allow $10 billion to flow in from Iraq. You have $6 billion for hostages. Uh, you, the, John Kirby goes on the Sunday shows and says, yeah. no, no, President Biden has passed 500 new sanctions, but you don't enforce them. And you allow China to get away with it. China is ultimately the big winner here because not only are they getting cheap oil, our military is once again exhausting itself in the Middle East. Those ships and missiles should be in the Pacific, not mm. the Middle East. Uh, yeah, and so point. China's sitting back fat and happy. Yeah, that's a great point about the Middle East uh, versus the uh, the Pacific. All right, let's talk about what you can do as an elected official. The House reconvening to address funding for Israel and Ukraine today. I spoke with the Speaker of the House yesterday. He says that Mike Johnson said he wants to uh, pass a package this week after the drone and missile attack. Uh, on Sunday Morning Futures, here's yeah. what Speaker Mike Johnson said. Watch. 
Way back in October, we passed our Israel support package. Uh, it's been sitting on Chuck Schumer's desk ever since. The House Republicans and the Republican Party understand the necessity of standing with Israel. We are going to try again uh, this week. The former president, President Trump, has talked about the possibility of uh, turning aid for Ukraine into a loan. Is that what you're considering? Yes. You know, I had a great visit with him at Mar-a-Lago on Friday. When you talk about aid to Ukraine, he's introduced the, the loan lease concept, which is a really important one, Repo Act, which is seizing the, the assets of uh, corrupt Russian oligarchs to help pay for this uh, resistance. I, I think these are ideas that I think can get consensus. We'll put something together and send it to the Senate and get these obligations uh, uh, completed. So, Congressman, I want to get your thoughts on how this would play out. I know there's a loan uh, idea, seizing so uh, sovereign Russian assets, lifting the uh, moratorium on LNG exports. Right. Uh, but there's still a fight underway about why you are going back to the drawing board now. You already passed a standalone uh, aid bill to Israel. Here's Rand Paul and what he says about this whole exercise right now, the senator from Kentucky. Watch. What I would say to Speaker Johnson is hold your ground, show some cojones, show some industrial fortitude, for goodness sakes. You've already passed aid to Israel. Tell Chuck Schumer when he's ready to take it up, take it up, and it's going to be paid for. So, Congressman, what does all of this look like? Tell us your reaction and whether or not you're going to see all alternatives to what we're talking about, including uh, a loan, you know, Trump says, you know, send money to Ukraine, fine, but make it a loan. Or do you want to seize sovereign Russian assets? That was another part of that Repo Act. Or maybe the Biden administration needs to lift that moratorium on LNG export projects so that there is not a worry about oil and gas situations in America. Your thoughts? Well, Maria, I would say D, all of the above. I certainly agree with, with uh, Senator uh, Paul that we've already passed not one but two aid packages. The problem is Chuck Schumer is afraid of his left. He's afraid of the pro-Hamas, pro-Palestinian, progressive left. So it's easy for him to just point back at the House. We can't play that game. He could pass that tomorrow, along with the SHIP Act that would that would dry up Iran's cash by putting sanctions on Chinese buyers. Uh, and look, we cannot, and I don't see anything moving without border, Maria. This isn't an either or, but it is a matter of priorities. And we're hearing that loud and clear from our constituents that we have to secure our border. Joe Biden created this mess through executive orders and eliminating Trump's executive orders. And I pray that uh, Speaker Johnson, in his phone call with Biden, uh, said, you put him back back in if you want to see aid. Number one. Number two, let's make Russia pay for it. That's with the Repo Act. Number three, Russia is flush with cash with the high price of oil. Why? Yeah. Because Biden is constricting our oil and gas. So yeah. their war machine is cranking away, yet we are constraining uh, our own gas. We should flood the world with cheap, clean American oil and gas, drive down the price of oil. Now you get a two for one. You're drying up Iran's war machine and Russia's, Russia's war machine. So this is about policy as much as it is just signing another blank check. Yeah. And finally, Maria, I want to introduce an amendment that says until Europe meets its 2 percent defense commitments, all 31 NATO nations, we're done with aid going forward. They have to pay their fair share. We can't ask the American people to dig deeper in their wallets when European politicians are doling out social programs like Germany and Spain and Italy, especially, that's a good deal for Europe, a bad deal mm. for the American taxpayers. Okay, so so, so real this quick, is about think, policy, not just blank checks. Are you saying that you are a no vote if a package comes to you that includes Ukraine aid along with Israel aid? I'm saying you have to have all of those other pieces in place, Maria. This no more blank checks to Joe Biden's failed strategy. Okay. He has backed us into a quagmire and a stalemate uh, over in Europe because of his bad policies. Wow. Congressman, it's good to see you. We'll be watching your work for sure. Thank you, sir.